Evening all, how are we all doing? Tornado 922 here, and it's uh, that time where I get round to answering all of the questions that you guys have put forward to me. So I've got the trusty phone here, because this is this is as high tech as it gets. Uh, because I'm doing it f uh, from the phone, it means that some of the comments are thrown out of order. So you may find that if you were one of the first uh, to put a comment down, it could be I don't end up reading out your one till the end of this video or even to the start of the next one. This will be done in two parts because there are so many questions to get through. Some of them will require require, require that's the word, uh, a tad more detailed answering than some of the others. Other ones I can sort of get away with uh, a couple of words at best. Others uh, will need breaking down and answering in segments. So I will try and get through as many as possible in the first part. If I haven't answered your question in this first part, rest assured your question will be answered in part two. So um, please do stick through this. It, uh, it does mean a, a fair amount to me if you do so. Hmm. Right, so, uh, and again, also, I will point out, name pronunciations of some of these I am going to butcher. So uh, bear with me. Alright, uh, question one from Copenhagen Rail Productions. Have you ever thought of visiting other countries and their trains? Yes, I have. Um, I haven't done a great deal this year, but next year uh, I've basically, in my mind anyhow, I've got plans to film in Belgium, uh, the Netherlands and Germany. I've got several places I want to go to within those countries, so uh, that is my plan. Well, my, my main plan, anyway. Uh, right. And Night Electricity Universe. Now, um, this looks like it's a second question you've put forward. So, I'll read it out anyway, and I will then get to your first question, wherever it fil filters down to in this list. So, um, right. Sorry to bother you again. Uh, seeing as I don't know that you've bothered me for a second time, I'm going to say, how dare you, sir? Uh, but as the Christopher Nolan of Train Enthusiasts, a compliment, thank you Carney, I don't make up to you sir, uh, do you think, and this is a big serious question, with two exclamation marks I might add, uh, do you think that rail nationalisation is a good idea as Jeremy Corbyn views it? Feel free to give examples from your experience. Uh, well I've not ever experienced British Rail. Uh, my earliest, well I can kind of say that I did. My earliest experiences were actually um, intercity, uh, intercity and network southeast. So I kind of had around that neck of the world, uh, but then they were quickly subsidised by you know the likes of Virgin Trains, uh, Silverlink, then London Midland, and now London Northwestern Railway. Um, well, Jeremy Corbyn, and this is basically the only bit of politics I'm going to get into. And as I'm, I'll point out, at the time of recording this, the election has already come and gone. Uh, and Jeremy Corbyn is going to be resigning as as leader of the Labour, le le leader of the Labour Party. Whew. We're getting there. Um, rail renationalisation. It's not going to solve anything. Okay, so what? You instead of the private companies owning the railways, you want to go back into public ownership. Okay. He hasn't actually, he didn't really specify when to do that. Okay, yeah, we want to bring the railways back into public ownership. Okay, are you going to sort out the spiralling travel costs? Because, you know, the ticket prices go up every single year. Are you going to, are you going to regulate this? Are, were, well, were you going to regulate this? What, what plans do you have in mind? Uh, because you've then got to factor in, essentially, the cost of maintaining the rolling stock. So... The ticket prices need to be factored into that as well. Some companies require track access rights, which cost them a pretty penny. So some of the open access um, operators require to um, basically pay um, another railway company access to run on their, their lines. So the ticket prices go into that. You've then got staff wages to pay for. The ticket prices, again, fluctuate because of that. So, the, okay, ticket prices are expensive. I think they're going to be expensive no matter which way you look at it, and they're going to get more expensive over over the years. It's inevitable. 
Um, all I will say is, and this is from research I've done over many, many years of British Rail, um, when you look at archive footage and photos of a lot of their rolling stock, they were kept in relatively poor condition. I'm not talking about the HSTs and um, other, other areas like that. The HSTs are actually very, very well kept uh, from what I've seen. But when you, you look at your, your class 50s, your class 47s, um, just to mention a few, a lot of them were in real poor nick and they weren't maintained at all. Right? When, when they were running, the exhaust fumes were phenomenal. And that's not just because the engines were fantastic, it's because the engines were so poorly maintained, so the fuel efficiency was just dire. So, I mean, personally, the way I see it is that having, having the private companies running around, fine by me, it, yeah, it's just a bit of variation. But, uh, yeah. I, I quite like it myself. Yes, thank you over there. Uh, my cat has decided to uh, throw her voice in. What? Really? Okay. Are you done? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so that's that's how I feel about it. Uh, right. Aiden, what do you think is the worst railway line in the UK? <sighs> I can't say what's, what I think is, is the worst railway line in the UK. Primarily because I haven't actually, I haven't seen them all. Um, so, really, I, I, I can't say. I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to give an opinion, but I just can't. So, uh, yeah, don't have that one. Uh, Isaac Ridge, what do you think of the 800s and do you think they are better or worse than Pacers? I prefer Pacers. Leave. Leave. Now. Leave. How? I mean, an 800 and a Pacer. You're comparing the two. One is a shoddy, shoddy piece of equipment that was built as, basically, it was like a fill-in gap. They basically built the things... Just and they were they were designed to last a couple of years at best, and they've been around for God knows how. And the 800s are purpose-built long-distance express trains. The 800s have got air conditioning. They've got um, much better seating. They've got far better space, far better crash safetyness. Um, basically, it's just everything. Everything the Pacer isn't is in the 800s. The 800 is a phenomenal piece of kit. The acceleration. Amazing fuel economy, amazing. A pacer. Why? How? Why do you prefer pacers? I mean, it's a good question. I would, have, I'd have loved for you to have expanded on why you think pacers or why you prefer pacers are better. But I can't see it myself. I mean, I'm, I'm glad the pacers are going. Wretched things. Uh, train spotting TV trailers. Please, can you go to Harrogate as? Uh, as it's a lot more busy now. Mm. I'll think about it. Gaming with Richard Games Only. Do West Coast Mainline. If you said please, I'm just saying that um, simply saying do West Coast Mainline, I do the West Coast Mainline anyhow, but um, just a, a please or a thank you uh, goes a, a long way. Just uh, small areas of, uh, of of manners, and that, that goes a long way. I'm not having a pop, but um, just for future reference, uh, a please or a thank you goes a very long way. Right, um, right here we go. MYC Kid 38 LOL. Good name. Uh, do you think the Class 88s should also be... Uh, should also be for passenger use as well. If if yes, what TOCs should they run for? Now you see, that sentence was typed out perfectly. However, I came along and read it out as if I've just had a few bevies. Uh, well, I don't see why not. I mean, basically they're just 68 with a pantograph. So, I mean, put it this way. If the Chilton main line were electrified from, I don't know, from London Marylebone to, I don't know, Princess Risborough, for argument's sake. 
It could run on electricity from Prince's Whisperer to London Railroad about and back. Once it Prince's, once it hits Prince, oh my God! Once it hits Prince's Whisperer, I'm gonna go to bed. Yeah, once it hit Prince's Whisperer, straight onto Diesel, boom. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, Chilton could do it. Um, Transpennine. Some hard part of the route that they're transponized 68 Mark V sets running along is electrified, so they could um, they could use 88s quite happily. Uh, right. Oh my lord, here we go. Right. This is. We're. Right, okay, this is a decent decent question from Russell Morgan. Or are you or have you been in a period costume drama, i.e., English Civil War? Hint, goatee. Um, I'm afraid not old well bean. Yeah, in English Civil War, no, it's just, it's not my thing. I'd, I'd love to go in there. I'd simply adore it, would you? And now, uh, do you prefer Midland to what now? No, stop. Read that one again. Do you prefer mainline filming or local line filming? I personally like vids where there are plenty of junctions, etc. Like crew, where you see the locos, etc. swerving about, etc. There's a lot of etc's in here. And fast passes, they also always make you take a deep breath. And apparently reading this makes you take a deep breath as well. Uh, when on platforms, obviously, uh, best I saw was on Didcot. We were passed by a HST doing 125, I'm sure. Even stood back and pulled you towards it. No amount of steadying, it still gives me butterflies when they roll past. A HST will. A HST is just incredible. It's stunning. It's a, it's a, a magnificent work of art. So Kenneth Grange... Take your hat off, Chief. You uh, you, you did a sprout there. Um, I kind of prefer mainline trains or mainline filming because you've got a greater variety in traffic and more frequency. On the flip side, local line filming, so a branch line, adds a bit of character to it because the trains are limited to a certain speed because of the the, the way in which the the line has been made. So the line could probably not have changed for 150, 200 years, depending on when it was built. And obviously the rolling stock changes, so the rolling stock could look significantly modern. The track design could be rigid as hell. So, yeah, I mean, I would have to, I'd have to choose mainline filming, if I'm honest. And really, the bulk of my films uh, throughout my channel are mainline films. There's, I don't think I've, I could probably count on one hand some of the local lines that I've done at best. Uh, Stay Alive Gaming 101, what is uh, your opinion on the Virgin Trains franchise expiry and what do you think of the... What do you think of the ad? And what do you think of the ad? And what do you think of the ad? You've lost me there. No, you've, you've, what do you think of the ad? What, what ad? What ad are you referring... You see... I, I would have preferred it if you if you had expanded on that. Wow, I cannot get my words out this evening. If you'd have expanded on what do I think of the ad, if, what ad are you referring to there, my, my good man? And are you a full-time train spotter? I wish. Um, well, what do I think of the Virgin Trains losing the franchise? Well, after 22 years, uh, it's almost sort of... It was hard to, to sort of comprehend, really, because it, it was... It was British Rail then went to um, Intercity Swallow, and then Virgin Trains came in, and over 22 years they've done so so much. Um, they've they've added they've, the timetables have been amazing. They've increased journey times, frequency of trains. They've brought in new trains in. Uh, they've gone to new destinations. Uh, they've brought in former services. I mean, yeah, you know, it's just I think Avanti West Coast have got. Um, some very big shoes to fill now that they're taken over from Virgin or have excuse me now taken over from Virgin Trains um, it's it's you know it's a shame I mean you know Virgin Trains did did an, an awful lot and um, they were probably one of the most well respected train operating companies in the UK I mean when you see you know like punctuality Okay, their trains. Some of the trains will run late. It's inevitable. They they run. They're running on a Victorian network, and a crowded network at best. So, yeah, you know, punctuality is going to be a is going to be hit and miss with some of their trains. But when you look at it, when you compare them to most other operators in the country, they're pretty much bang on. 
So uh, hopefully, if Anti, um, with their new plans, uh, they they can do Virgin proud. Okay, they're gonna have the the staff will will stay the same. The staff haven't changed. They'll have, they'll have, they'll have like new manager teams coming in. They'll obviously hire new people as well. So the team will get bigger. But fundamentally, the the old Virgin family have just got a different name badge. So this should be should be okay. Uh, Steve uh, Waring. Uh, hi, Tornado 922. What is your favourite Freight Prime mover? I love the way you phrase that. My personal favourite is the Class 20 Bobo, English Type Electric 1, or English Electric Type 1, should I say, sorry. The most underrated workhorse of the network, in my humble opinion. Second only to the undisputed champ, the Mighty Class 37. Freight Prime mover. Well, because of my age group, it means that um, all the freight that I really had ever seen has been done by 66's uh, well the, the bulk was 66's and obviously the 70 came in uh, then the 68's came in then the 88's came in um, I've seen I mean okay, I've seen a few 60's but the, the bulk of the of the ones I've seen are um, 66's but when I go onto YouTube obviously it gives it, it opens up the world, and you're able to see so much more. So um, I would, if I was to look at favourites from all the all the various videos I've seen, I've got a thing for I think the thirty seven, the thirty seven is my favourite uh, freight prime mover, just because you nowadays you see them on engineering trains and you see them on um, special chances. You don't see them in their prime sort of holding those heavy goods trains, really giving it the beans going up hills. So yeah, it's, it's got to be the 37 for me, comfortably. Uh, Wagwan Bros. Wagwan Bros. Ooh. Uh, do you plan on going to cross gates? Probably not. Warrington Train Spot. Apart from Seven Sisters, what is the worst station you have been to or have you... Or have you been told you cannot film at a station? The only station I've ever been told not to ever film at was Seven Sisters because the staff at Greater Anglia were rude. Um, yeah, they were rude, quite frankly. Um, not a very good experience for Greater Anglia. And if any of their staff happened to watch this, this was a few years ago. And yeah, the staff were just incredibly, incredibly rude. Uh, they didn't even let me get a word in edgeways, they were just dismissive instantly, shut me down continuously. That's really the only station that is my, that is my worst one. All the others I've been to, perfectly fine. So, take the old coffee there, that might actually convince the vocal cords to play ball. Class 350 fan, what is your favourite train? Uh, right, okay, I'm going to expand on this because it depends on the type. Now, if I'm going favourite commuter, class 321. If I'm going favourite express, uh, HST, international, 373. Uh, favourite... Um, favourite modern diesel locomotive, 68. Um, well, 68 and 70 on a real par. Favourite... Um, well, I can call it heritage because it is, but even though you still get manual operation, is the 37. Hands down. Uh, right, George Griffiths, can you film at uh, Shrewsbury? Yes, I will. I'll be going there next year, but I don't know when that's going to be. Preservation 29, hi, Tornado 922. Could you please do an audio video at Stourbridge Station, Stourbridge Town Station, please? No. 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 Uh, Gunner Case 123, are you sad to see Virgin Trains disappear? Very much so, as I, as I stated um, only just a few minutes ago. Uh, Jonathan Ledbitter, can you come to Sunderland because LNER HSDs are coming in? Uh, now, bearing in mind, this comment was put on three weeks ago, and the LNER HSTs will be finishing, um, well, really, this, this week is when they're finishing, so, um, no. Thomas Owen, what is your... Opinion on the Aventurers, IETs, and Flirts. Uh, the Aventurers, they look great. The Stadler Flirts, now I love Swiss trains, so the Stadler Flirts are okay in my book. They look amazing. Admittedly, Greater Anglia have had problems with them. 
IETs, um, yeah, IETs are fantastic. Okay, they're replacing the HST, so you know you've got to go take it with a pinch of salt. But you know they're they're doing all right. They're doing all right. Uh, Reese Foster, can you do hat? Can you do trains at Hatfield, please? I love the fact you really lengthened that, please. Um, yeah, I will be going there. I just can't say when, I'm afraid. NYC Kid 38, lol. Have you thought about filming trains in America, mainly around New York City? Oh God, yes. I mean, if I had the if I had the chance to go to to America for a couple of weeks, I would film at so many places. I'd, I'd be I'd focus my filming on the Northeast Corridor because I want to film the Acela Express. Uh, you've then got um, all the various sort of local uh, trains running around. Um, yeah, I'd film in New York City, Grand Central Station, happily. I'd also love to go and film um, somewhere in, in sort of Central America to go and catch you know, like Union Pacifics and uh, Norfolk Southern running around the sort of real big, heavy hitting American freight trains that are just like a mile and a half long. They make the ones in the UK look tiddly. But uh, yeah, I mean, if I had the chance to go to America and film um, film the trains in America, I would. And um, I must admit, if I could ever get a cab ride in, a, in an American train, I'd be quite happy. Quite, quite happy. <sighs> Dear me. Right. Uh, trains, vids, and more. Do you support a football team? If yes, who it is? Who is it, even? And uh, who's your favourite player? If not, what sport do you like? Uh, I do. Well, so I do. Well, so I do support a football team, but I'm not like you know an avid fan. I don't go to games. I basically I support Manchester United. Um, you know, I can see the comments already coming in already. So. Um, no, I support. I've, I've been a supporter of Man U since uh, I can remember. Um, ever since I was a, a young lad. It's, um, I can't say I've got a, a particularly favourite player to be perfectly honest with you. I don't follow it all that much. I'm not a. I'm not an avid follower. You know, I'll keep up with um, sort of the, you know the, the latest scores on the games that, uh, that they're playing when I get the chance. But uh, yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, I, I take a slight interest, but nothing that's terribly fancy. It, to be honest with you, I'm I'm much much big on rugby. I love it. I used to play rugby for eight plus years. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, you know, the Six Nations, the World Cup. The World, I was going balmy in the World Cup. I mean, that final game, England South Africa. Cool. But I tell you what, England Australia. That was insane. That was a beautiful game we played, and then against the All Blacks. I've never been more proud to see us annihilate the All Blacks like that. I mean, I honestly thought the All Blacks were gonna gonna do it, and then we did that V formation when they were doing the hacker. I was like, yes, Owen Farrell with that grin. He looked amazing. Joe Marler, the the bloke looked lost. Let's not beat about the bush here. Joe Marler, you could see him. He, sort of, he turned around and went, oh. He, he he genuinely looked confused. It was amazing. You then had Dan Cole, who just did this. Just stared. Just looked, he just looked evil. He just looks evil. Then you had, um... Oh, Sinclair. He just sort of, every now and again, just... He was head bobbed. He was, he was well away. But yeah, I mean, rugby is my thing. It's my jam. That and, and uh, motorsports. Quite happily, you know, Formula One, British touring cars. Uh, Formula E, the Blancpain GT series, the um, the World Endurance series. So yes, yeah, so there we are. Uh, where are we? 24 minutes. Okay. Right. Carl Shield. I'm very sad that Virgin Trains are going. To be honest with you, I think a lot of people are. Kieran Clark, how is the West Coast Main Line doing? Well, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll take it out for a coffee and um, I'll ask you. I'll, uh, I'll work your magic. How are Avanti? Have you seen the new? Let's be. Shall I try the one again? Yes, I shall. How are Avanti? Have you seen the new livery yet? Uh, how are Avanti? I assume Avanti are fine. Uh, yes, I have seen the new livery. I've not filmed it as of yet. 
Yeah, uh, because I've not been filming on the Vosco Spain line uh, since they took operation. But um, I was driving to work one day, one morning, and it passed over me on the A5. Uh, the, the livery looks astounding. If you guys haven't seen it yet, check it out. It actually looks amazing. It really does. Uh, right. NYC 38 low. Blimey, you're keeping me busy. What will happen to the South Western Railway units that are being replaced by the new Class 701s? <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know. My immediate assumption is that the trains are going to be sent for scrap. Because they're all third rail, and I can't see a company wanting to fork out God knows how many thousands to stick a pantograph on them, so... <sighs> yeah. Unless Southern want to pick up a few, which I can't see them doing, um, yeah, they they're gonna they're gonna be scrapped. So unless anybody happens to know otherwise, then you know, throw throw it in my direction. But as far as I can tell, the former Southwestern Railway units, once the seven hundred ones come in, will be scrapped. I can't see a future for them anywhere at all. Uh, Seth Gallup, why did you start doing YouTube? Uh, well, basically, um, I, okay, so I had, had, had a tablet, uh, not too dissimilar from this. I think I've gone about three or four, sort of, th through the stages of them. And I had the tablet for a few, a few months, probably me about a year or so. And uh, there was a YouTuber I watched called um, Ian Paul Trains, and I was really into his videos. And um, primarily it's because uh, when he was filming, he did commentary over the top, which is it's like, oh, that looks good. I might give that a go. So I looked at my tablet and thought, oh, it's got a camera. It can record for long periods of time. It looks like it's got decent enough quality. So yeah, I'll give it a bash. So um, I went down to Lowton Buzzard and I just did two films uh, without any commentary to start with. Because I thought, right, I'll just do it without commentary. See how we get on. And then the next one, I thought, okay, right, we'll go to Cheddington and I'm going to give commentary a go. I'm going to see how I get on doing it. And um, it was a mess. I mean, if you guys want to check out the video, literally just go up, just type into YouTube, uh, trains at Cheddington. Don't worry about trying to find a date. Um, or even, um, I don't know, do trains at Cheddington and follow by Tornado 922. Uh, you'll see it in there. Um, the title is literally just Trains at Cheddington. Uh, it's shocking. I mean, it, it is literally, it's terrible. Yeah, I mean, you know. If you want if you want kicks, watch that video. It's shocking. Uh, Mr. Transport, Mr. Transport Guy, what is your least and favourite train? Least favourite? Pacer. Easy. Favourite? Um, again, well, I've, I've technically I've answered that one because uh, I broke down that list slightly earlier. I will say, um, if if you guys have asked similar questions, um, I basically just sort of refer to the comments or the questions that I answered um, earlier in the video. So, like this one, Ash behind the camera, how did you start YouTube? Um, again, I've literally just answered that. Uh, Kieran Clark, what's the difference between the eight hundreds and the eight hundred ones? Well, I believe. Um, it's it's more the electronics. I'm not actually 100% sure, but uh, from what I gather, um, I think the 801s have a little bit more oomph to them. I'm, sh I'm sure I'm sure that's that's what it is. In fact, um, tell you what, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to do a quick little scan and just um, see what I can dig up, and I'll be right back. Well, in fact, you wouldn't even notice because it's just going to be click and click for you. It might be about 10, 15 minutes for you while I do a quick little uh, dig. So, see you in a sec. And it's by magic I'm back again. Um, I actually would do the answer. Quick little refresh on there. The 801s are purely EMUs. Uh, the 800s are um, by mode. The 801s are literally just electric multiple units. That's the difference. So, um, so well, technically, the 801s have actually got great acceleration because they're not carrying uh, the diesel on board that the 800 series would carry. So, yeah, there we are. 
that's that is the difference. Um, how I didn't know that immediately off the cusp, and I had to give myself a little refresher, I do not know. But then, to be honest with you, um, I've not really ever thought of doing a great deal of research into the 800 series. Right, uh, Ben's Trains videos, what do you think of the new Northern Trains? I think they're great. I honestly think they're fantastic. Cornwall Trains fan, do you plan to come to Cornwall? Uh, at some point I will, yes. Uh, Reese Foster, can you do another train set Hatfield video please? I will do at some point, I don't know when this will be, but I will. RX Fisher, what's the worst station you've filmed at on the South Western Mail? I particularly hate Surbiton, dodgy station. I'm keen to know why you think it's dodgy. I mean, when I went there, I certainly had no issues at all. I think it was, uh, it was a nice little station, nice um, surroundings. Um, character building, quite frankly. Worst station? Um, Well, I mean, Shawford wasn't particularly wonderful. It was quite bland, so it'd probably be there. Luke Alford, will you delete your channel because of copper? No. Um, funnily enough, um, the comment above yours uh, basically allows me to break this into effect. So I'm going to. Uh, so, Luke Alford, um, your comment will be answered through the reading of this next question, which is from AB Trains. Everyone's bickering about YouTube copper, which is Child's Online Privacy Protection Act situation. Are you for or against this law? Explain your reasoning. And um, in case everyone's aware, uh, if you are a, a content creator, this is taking into effect uh, first of next month, first of January next year, no matter what. Uh, so basically, it's an American um, law that's come in. And essentially, it uh, wants to determine if uh, the content you produce is suitable for children. Now, they deem children to be anyone under the age of 13. Uh, now, because of this, it means that um, if I'm going to put my videos under the classification of not designed for children, when you go on, when you, you go into this and you read through it all, some of the examples I gave you, you know, is it like you know, cartoons and um, sort of child-based humour and things like that. Whilst I look at my demographics, my demographics for the viewing age are varied. I've literally got everyone from uh, basically kids to uh, the the elderly, senior citizens. Uh, now. I'm a big advocate of not using any uh, offensive, foul language in my videos. Uh, and that's basically because I do have the younger viewers watching, and I have... Well, basically, I, I, just, I just don't want to encourage foul language. So, um, instead of me using uh, a, a cuss word, I will replace it with something. I'll replace it with a humorous word, just to basically dig myself out of a hole that I could dig myself into. So, um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm all for it because, you know, you want to protect children online. I understand that. You don't want, um, you don't want kids going onto YouTube and finding videos that, strictly speaking, aren't for them. Um, so, uh, probably in the next couple of days or so, I'll be going onto my YouTube studio editor and I'm basically just going to make my channel, well, put my channel as not, uh, my content isn't. Uh, made for kids. That's basically what it is. Is it made for kids or isn't it made for kids? And I'm going to have it as made for isn't. Because whilst it's a, it's just purely trains, and I may add a few more bits in there, um, I don't do it just. I don't make it for kids. Basically, um, I don't want that to be sounding rude or anything at all. It's for it, it's for everyone. I try to include everybody in there. So um, yeah, that, that's basically how it's how that one's going to go. It's not going to affect my channel too much. Um, all it could do is slightly affect the ad revenue that I generate, and, uh, and that's obviously because of the type of ads that will be shown. Um, now, I don't know if when it comes to um, you guys watching my vids, uh, if you may have to prove your, um, your age rating. So... Um, any parents that are currently watching this with your children, um, if 
if uh, if you're if you're watching this through your child's account, for argument's sake, um, I don't know if you may have to prove the age before watching my vid. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, it, there may be nothing to it at all, um, but I would just double check anyway. I can't imagine that would be the case, but uh, I don't want. Um, yeah, I don't want you guys to think just because I'm I'm basically choosing as my to make my channel not made for kids uh, that I'm trying to um, what's the word um, basically turn turn the younger viewer away from my content. That's that's the last thing I want to do. But um, what I don't want, to, and this is a serious problem. What I don't want to do is say make my content say my my channel content is made for kids. Uh, and then things start flagging up where they go, actually, this isn't. Because if, if they start picking up on those things and it turns out that I'm not making content for kids, I can actually get in serious, serious trouble. Uh, and it can actually be a hefty financial fine and or uh, worse, depending on what happens. So I'm playing, I'm going to play it safe and uh, go with what I think is the better option. Now, obviously, there are other channels out there that, that clearly aren't. Uh, for kids, and it makes their life so much easier deciding that. But um, I've had to think about this one, and I personally think I'm just going to have it as not made for kids. Uh, so I'm, I'm covering myself there. Uh, right, Reese trains buses and more. What inspired the name Tornado Nine Two Two? All right, Tornado because of the steam train tornado. Ninety Two, the year of my birth, and the additional two just because it sounded better than just saying Tornado Ninety Two. I think Tornado 922, it just sounds a little bit better. Uh, right, Richard, sorry, uh, Michael Richards. Hi mate, I really enjoyed the day that you were at Gatwick Airport giving the commentary on EasyJet flying in. I was watching a video in 1993 at Reading Station. Are there still Class 165 Turbo still knocking around? I used to commute between Hunkerford and Reading. I also haven't seen the Hastings Thumper lately, have you mate? Finally, keep up the good work, mate. Stay safe and take care, and wrap up warm and try and stay, try and stay dry. Be safe. It's not safe. Don't do it, bold eagle. Uh, well, thank you kindly for that. Um, obviously, I always take my own safety into uh, the utmost importance, and obviously, anybody else that is accompanying me on my trips. Uh, one six fives, yeah, one six five and one six sixes are still running around the, uh, the the Great Western Network. You can still catch them aplenty. Uh, the last time I caught the Hastings Slumper, and the only time I've ever caught the Hastings Slumper, was at Guildford. And it was running a, a rail tour. Uh, NYC Kid Lol, you really, you really are, you're a real busy bee on these questions, aren't you, my friend? Uh, what is your opinion on the class 195 and 331s? I think they're great. Okay, they're built by the Spanish firm CAF, but um, yeah, they look really good. Uh, NYC Kid 38 Lol. Uh, how come you skipped Vauxhall Station before filming Waterloo? Um, well, it was a toss-up, really. It was either that or do Queenstown Road. And having asked a couple of my um, friends who'd been around there in the past, uh, they said that Queenstown Road would actually be the better of the two to do. So that's what I did. I chose Queenstown Road over uh, Vauxhall. Uh, right, where are we? 38 minutes. I've got a time time for a few more. This will be about 44, 45 minutes in length uh, and then the second part uh, will accompany. So again if your comment hasn't been answered yet uh, please rest assured I am steadily working through them as best I can. Uh, box Break Corner. If you could be a driver on any one journey on the entire National Rail Network timetable what trip would you do? I would if I could. I would love to go and take um, well any form of any any train really from London King's Cross to Edinburgh because I'd love to get a driver's eye view of um, going up the east coast in between uh, well basically in between Newcastle and um, and Edinburgh but I would love to have that sh that run up the east coast mainline um, you know going through Stevenage, Hitchin, Peterborough, Grantham all that lot just see it from the point of view of the driver. But um, I'd be I'd be paying particular attention, just a gasp at the the, the beauty of the uh, of, of of the northeast of England. Uh, Sergeant Sylvian, uh, when would the Midland Mainline series be released? I'll be doing that in two years' time. 
next year in 2020 will be the southeastern main line going from uh, Dover to London Charing Cross and then after that I'll do the middle of main line from uh, Sheffield to London St Pancras. Right. Uh, ben Stocks, what time are we? 40 minutes. Uh, given that the HST is disappearing from the East Coast Main Line soon and how popular it is, do you think that they could be used by rail to operators such as West Coast Railways, especially repainted in City 125 or Swallow Livery? Give them a new lease of life for a bit longer. Well, <laughs> you know, funny thing. It's done, you know. Ellen and Yar repainted an entire HST set in BR Blue and it looks incredible. So um, you, you almost foresaw this coming. Um, and there's a very, very strong rumour running around that um, there's a chap that's actually going to buy the HST set. Um, I was actually just talking about it this evening, funny enough, with one of my, uh, with one of my friends. Uh, it's a very, very strong rumour. So um, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I, would, I would love to see a BR Blue Intercity HST kept by a reptile firm, because that would generate a lot of interest. Uh, Harley... Bardo, what station is better, Stratford International or Ebsleet International? I'm going to say Stratford because uh, of how it's built, because it's it's so enclosed. So when you get the Eurostars giving it the beans, either um, up or down, basically the, the walls either side amplify the sound, and it is amazing. It's a beautiful sound. Uh, Flying Scotsman, when will you do Nottingham next year? Uh. I honestly can tell you, at this stage, um, I can say I will be going to places, but the time scale, I, I can't say right yet. Uh, what's your favourite sprinter? Well, probably the 158s. They've just got a, they've got a charm to them. Uh, sorry, and that was train spotting TV trailers that asked about the, the favourite sprinter. Reese Foster, class 800 or 390 Pendolino? It's got to be the 390. The 390s, they've just got that thing about them. They've just got, they've got, a, they've just got something to them. It just, just works for me. Uh, right, this will be my last question, and then um, everything else should hopefully be asked or should answered, should I say, in uh, part two. Uh, Trains and buses UK. What's your opinion on the class seven hundred one, seven five five, and seven four five? Um, well, the seven five five and seven four five. That is obviously the Stadler flirts that Grace Wrangler have brought in. Uh, they look fantastic. Um, they've certainly got a good charm to them. Uh, and this is just what I've seen uh, through social media and everything else. I haven't actually seen them myself. Uh, next year will be the year I actually get to uh, see them in person. As for the uh, 701s, uh, design looks good. Uh, I'd have to wait to see what they're like in testing. And obviously, when they come into the UK. Excuse me. Right, so that's going to uh, conclude part one there. Amazing questions so far. And I've got plenty more to uh, to rattle through, so I am going to uh, refill the coffee cup and get myself comfortable, and I'll be back with part two. And um, part two will be uploaded on the same day um, as part one. So part one will be up uh, in the morning. And if you if 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 part two is up at the same time as this, it means that you basically get to watch it immediately afterwards. So um, thanks very much, guys. And as I say. Uh, questions that I haven't answered in this will be answered in part two. So uh, take care guys, and I'll catch you well, in a few minutes.